गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरुरेव परम ब्रह्मा अस्म श्री गुराव नम चिन्मय व्यापत्सर्वैलोक्यम सचराचर तत्पद दर्शित ये नस्म श्री गुराव बंधुश सखा ओम सहना सहना भुन सह वीर खरबाव So what verse are we on? We're on verse 28 on page 29. Verse 28. So what we're talking about Vinyaranya is combining two topics. First is the Panchakarana, the fivefold division and subsequent recombination of the Tanmatras, the subtle elements. We talked about how the elements, earth, air, fire, water, and space correspond to earth, the sense of smell, fire, seeing, water, tasting, earth, air, fire, earth, air, touch, earth, air, fire, water, and then sound, space. And these become the sense organs, the sense perceptions, and the sense objects. This is easy to understand if you go to the dream state. In the dream state, you've got a dream body, and it's the mind itself which becomes the sense organs, the sense perceptions, and the sense objects. And what the Guranya is saying, actually, the Upanishads are saying, this is only a grossified form of the same process. And then he's combining that with material he's taken from Mandukya Upanishad. And what he's talking about is microcosm, macrocosm. You have a physical body from which you see the waking state world. This is called Vishwa or Vaishwanara. The macrocosm has the same thing, Jagat, the entire phenomenal world. You have a subtle body, which Mandukya calls Taijasa. This is also called the Sukshma Sharira, the subtle body. Sometimes called the Antakarana. Listen carefully. This is what is referred to as the transmigrating soul. Macrocosm. We have the total mind. 
which Mandukya calls Hiranyakarva. Total A. Some total of all the thoughts and feelings, images, and memories, etc. He doesn't directly address it, but individually we have deep sleep, which Mandukya calls Pragnya, which is pure vasana, pure ignorance. What do we all experience in deep sleep? I know nothing. There is a macrocosm, total vasana. Which Mandukya calls Ishwara. He who wishes, he who wills, the total Vasana. What was it that caused the Big Bang? And where he's headed with this is at the core of my being is witnessing consciousness. Chidakasha, the space of pure awareness. And the ground of being of the whole universe we call Brahman. And the Upanishads thunder, Rajnanam Dhamma. Brahman is consciousness. Now this witnessing consciousness that's the core of my being and that ground of being of the whole universe, they are the same thing. I am Atma Brahma. So this is the point that he's getting at. All right. Will you help us out with verse 28, please, Ganesh? Though it cannot be made an object of knowledge, the self is still felt very directly. So it must be self-revealing. Existence, consciousness, and infinity the indications used for Brahman are all present here, also in the self. Yes. So now what Vidyaranya is talking about, how is it that we can say the senses do not go there, speech does not go there, the mind does not go there, the intellect does not go there. It is not knowable as an object of cognition. Oh, that means nobody knows the self. No. It is known. But not by the known instruments of perception. Who sees the phone? I do. That's yourself. You don't get another self. It's not about there being a higher self that I'm going to reach someday. That doesn't make sense. I'm going to reach a higher self. No, you have one self. One self. My problem is I superimpose on that direct experience all sorts of confusion but I don't get another self. I don't go to another self. Now, the question is, how do you know you are you? You do not see, hear, taste, touch, or smell the sound. You do not emote the self. You do not think the self. You could have the thought, oh yeah, I am the self. 
That's not it. That's just another thought. Yet you do not doubt that you are you. So the world is known through what we call the triple D, the triple factor. No word, no wing, and no I Jim through seeing know the table. I Jim through hearing know the traffic. I through manas mind know my feelings. I through buddhi know my thoughts. How do you know you were you? First of all, who knows it? Well, I do. I can remember giving a, a, a workshop up in Piercy. This is about golly, just early 90s. And there was a, a Shunya Vaden in the audience. He was a Buddhist, but a scoliest of the boy. And I asked the question. Anybody here not exist? Of course, you said. Is this something you've studied or is this something you've experienced? Oh, I've experienced it. And to whom did this occur? I do not doubt. That something went away, probably came back. We would call that ahankara. We would call that karka, doer. We would call it jiva bhavana, the feeling that I'm a person. Absolutely, that goes away. But consciousness remains. When have you ever not been you? Who knows it, I do. What's the pramana, the means of knowledge? The world I had seeing, hearing, feeling. What's the means of knowledge for knowing the self? I don't know. The self is its own instrument of knowledge. What is it that's known? Listen carefully. You will never see the self as an object. Oh, Jim, I was in meditation and there was gold light. I saw the self. If someone misunderstands the Upasana section of Katopanishad. Yes, I was meditating and I saw the soul. It was a flame the size of my thumb in my heart. I saw it. I saw it. No. The self is not knowable as an object that it is not unknown. So the scriptures use terms like swayam bhu, self-evident, or swayam jyoti, self-luminous, self-effulgent. Just like the sun is the light by which all the objects in the world are known. But I don't have to bring out a torch, a flashlight, and shine it on the sun to see the sun. It is self-luminous. You are self-luminous, self-evident, self-existent. What is your nature? Sat, pure existence. Chit, 
pure awareness. What was the third term he did use, Anand? What was it? Uh, you think he he did use Ananda? He did. Sat, satyam Jnana Ananda. Yes. So, Ananda, for now, let us translate it as no sorrow reaches. Physical pain gets to my body. Emotional upset gets to my mind. Doubt gets to my intellect but nothing touches me. Later on, we will go deeply into why the scriptures use the term ananda to describe the self. Literally means bliss absolute, but it's not an emotion. Your self is not an emotion. <gasps> Oh, oh, I think I'm experiencing the self, Jim. Oh, oh. No. Maybe some ecstasy, some spiritual experience. But that's not. You are a constant, unchanging, eternal factor. Any thoughts on this? So Jim, I, um, I misspoke. So it actually said not Ananda, it said Anantam. So Anantam. Unending. Yeah. Unending. Anantam. So you are pure existence, pure consciousness that has no beginning and has no end and has no change. When have you ever not been you? Well, I think I became me when I was born. How do you know you did not exist before you were born? Because I don't remember anything. Okay, what is today? The 19th of June of 2023. What were you doing 10 years ago on the 19th of June? 2013, you know? Do you know? No. Memory is not a test of existence. You did not cease to be 10 years ago. You still remember. You never had the experience of not being. And if at any time, we quieten the mind enough, introvert the attention, we will see that it's always near Malam without any dirt, near Rupa without any form. beyond everything, yet always here, here. The self is not only transcendent beyond the beyond the beyond, but it is imminent. It pervades every experience now, now, now. It's absolutely pervaded by my knowing of it. What is it that I'm seeing? Just the fun matras. It's all it is. And they're grossified for. Now, it's one thing to understand this intellectually. The work that we need to do is through the day, especially if my heart moves. If what we say in the, in the modern age, I get triggered, I get upset, or I get fearful, 
or I get annoyed. Stop. Check out yourself. Now, what is it that's checking out the self? Understand. What is it that gets realized? This is such an important point. So many people don't understand it. The scriptures say both bondage and liberation occur to the mind. The self is ever free. Your self does not get realized. This is why the great sage Meher Baba used to say, everybody's already realized. Don't worry, be happy. Because the real knowledge, the self-evidence of I, everybody already has. So what's my problem? My problem is my stupid mind. So when I was doing my sadhana in the ashram, my name for my mind was Mudha. What's Mudha mean? Caught up in the stupidity of delusion. What is my bondage? It is nothing more than the deeply rooted conviction in my mind that I'm bound. Meaning, I think I am my body. What is liberation? What is moksha? Oh, I'm going to go to Brahma Loka. No. The only liberation there is, is this psychic change, this phenomenal deep shift. Where does it actually occur in the Vijnana Mayakusha, the subtlest part of the intellect? So what happens? The mind gets very quiet. And then with the help of the guru, the help of the scriptures, our attention is turned inward. Who am I? And if there's a pause, a moment between our thoughts, then the no thingness of the self becomes very clear. Clear to what? Clear to my subtle intellect. Subtle intellect goes, oh, I'm not a person. Oh, there's nobody there. Oh, aham brahmas. Notice the insight is not, oh, I realized now. <coughs> I'm a Muni. No. No personal sense of self is real. And this aha that occurs in the subtle intellect, this pratyabhinya, this recognition, is the transformation. There's no other liberation than the deeply rooted conviction in the mind based on direct experience. That I'm free. I've always been free. I am Brahman. Neither mental condition affects the self. It is the witness of the goal. Next verse. (laughs) 
സത്യത്വരഹിപ്യം ജഗദാബ്ധൈകസാക്ഷിണ ബാധ കിം സാക്ഷികോ ബ്രൂഹി വ്രതാസാക്ഷിക ഇഷ്യത്തെ Existence is what cannot be negated. If the self, which is the witness of the per- perishable world, becomes perishable, then who will be the witness to the fact of its perishability? For destruction without a witness of it cannot be postulated. Yes, oh, he's poking at the Buddhists, at the Shunya Vardens. So, our philosophical definition of sat of what's real with a big capital r existence with a big capital e that which is never subject to negation so if it doesn't exist in the beginning and seems to have an existence in the middle and then goes out of existence at the end it has at best small r relative reality it's not sat now just like the boy in my workshop back in the 90s what vidyaranya is talking about the buddhist says oh you vedantins you do not know the self is impermanent it goes out of existence it is destroyed in the fire of meditation then vidyaranya says who saw it it cannot be known without a witness someone or something to know it example what did i have for lunch today do you know no why that wasn't present exactly to know something you must know it and listen carefully you also must be there to know the absence of something is there a phone in my hand yes Is there no phone in my hand? Yes. You know the presence of something, you know the absence of something. So, if you know the absence of the self, who knows it? Therefore, whatever went away, cannot be ultimate reality cannot be brahman cannot be atman so when the buddha talked about the doctrine of anatma not self this is my particular reading of it at that time 500 BCE the term atma was used to sometimes mean the body sometimes mean the subtle body sometimes to mean the infinite self it was not clearly defined philosophically most usually meant to be the jivatma the transmigrating soul 
And rather than trying to parse the distinction in the usage, the Buddha said, there's, just, there's no self. What there is, is a ground of being. There's your Buddha nature. There's mind with a capital M. The Buddhists use all sorts of different ways. They're talking about the same thing. By the time we get to Shankara, the language is much more precise. Gita will use the term Atman sometimes to talk about the transmigrating soul. Shankara never does. Vidyaranya never does. Is this clear? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So what Vidyaranya is saying for those people who say ultimate reality is nothing, <coughs> consciousness itself is impermanent. That is absolutely unverifiable. You've never seen consciousness come into existence. You've never seen it disappear. You've seen mind states do that. But not yourself. Don't believe me. Look to your direct experience. Very, very important point. Very important verse. So I rarely will use the term Jivatma. I don't like to use it because it's confusing. I normally use the term jiva bhavana. Bhavana for Westerners means attitude or feeling. The feeling that I'm a person. Again, it's like hypnotism. If someone goes to a hypnotist and they're hypnotized into thinking they're a chicken, they go around the room, what, 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 what? They do not become a chicken. They just believe they're a chicken. And the hypnotist goes, oh God, I was so weird. I was sure I was a chicken. Also happens at night. We imagine a dream body in a dream world with dream thoughts and feelings. And it seems real to the dreamer. In fact, it may seem real to the waker for a minute or two. But then you realize, oh no, just created by the mind. So also, the personal sense of self, this ahankara, even the word ahankara is so great. Aham, first person pronoun. Kara comes from kri, to make or to do. What is the difference between aham and ahankara? Aham is you. Ahankara are I maker thoughts. I'm Jim. I'm a man, or I'm a woman, or I'm old, I'm young, I'm fat, I'm thin, I'm good, I'm bad, I'm successful, I'm a failure. I'm loved, I'm not loved. I have problems, I have no problems. All of that is I am Kara, fill in the blank. Words that make a phony sense of I. It is like 
a shadow. It's nothing that really exists. superimposed on the direct experience of the hum. So you have the sentence, I am fill in the blank. You got to take out your yoga scissors. I am the hum. I like that. I've used the yoga scissors before. Next verse. Apani Teshu Mur Teshu Shamurtam Shishyate Viat Shakyeshu Bhatityesh Pante Shishyate Yatta Devatat. When all forms are destroyed, the formless space still remains. So when all the perishable things are destroyed, what remains is that. That is the imperishable Brahman or self. So, we have room space. All the things in the room are temporary and will eventually get destroyed. But the space remains. Eventually, the building will fall down. But space is untouched. What he's pointing at here is something that is so marvelously articulated in Gita. At one point, Krishna says, all this is strung on me like gems on a thread. The, the term is money sutra. So the self is in me and it's in you and it's in you and it's in you. That nice. But then much later on, I think it's the 11th chapter, totally contradicts himself. He says, well, actually, I am not in them. They are in me. So is the space in the water glass or is the water glass in the space? When the water glass is broken, does anything happen to the space? Then he goes on to say, well, actually, they're not really in me. Hmm? So at night, you create a dream body with a dream ego in a dream world with dream thoughts and feelings. But when you wake up, the people, places, and things of the dream, where did they go? Gone. They weren't really even in you. They are imagination. They are sankalpa. That's it. So you are forever unchanging, achala. All this seen passes in front of. Body, mind, intellect is constantly changing. I get 
get older, I get fatter, I get wrinkly. And eventually it will fall off. But you go nowhere. <clears throat> You open your picture book and look at a photo of yourself as a young person, as a child. Where is that body? Gone. Dead. But did you cease to exist for even a moment? Next verse. Sarva bodhe na kinchit chet. Yen na kinchit. Adevatat bhasha evatra bhidyante. Nir badham tavadastihi. If the opponent objects, nothing remains after everything, name and form has been destroyed. Then we reply that you describe that what you describe as nothing is the self. Here, the language alone differs, but there surely remains something, the witness after the destruction of all. So the opponent here is a Buddhist. And he's saying, when everything is destroyed, here this is metaphor. It means samadhi. It means in the deepest meditation. When the perception of the world ends, and the personal sense of self remains. So the opponent is saying, yes, but when I have had these moments, the self has disappeared. Vidyaranya is saying, it is true that your personal sense of self disappeared. But something there was that remained that was aware of the disappearance of the ego and its return if it comes back. Now, let's talk a little bit about Samadhi. Many of us, especially Indians, have romantic notions of samadhi. And the explanation I'm going to give you comes directly from Tripura Rahasyam, one of the favorite scriptures of Ramana Maharshi. And Tripura describes it, or uh, the patria, the author, describes it this way. In the world, we have two things going on. We have the prakasha of pure awareness, and we've got what that text calls vimarsha, literally deliberation. Vimarsha here can mean any kind of vritti any kind of vikalpa, any thought, any perception, any memory, any emotion, anything that's going on, stuff. So you've got the light of pure awareness and there's stuff. Any time the vimarsha That is Samadhi. Now, actually, we experience Samadhi all the time. 
what that scripture calls fleeting samadhi. The example I like to use, I'm coming home from the symphony on a Thursday afternoon. I've gone to the matinee and the BART train is crowded. And there's this person, I'm sitting in a chair and there's a person holding on to the strap. Do you ride BART? And he's been working all day. You can watch it. All of a sudden, his eyes just go, he's gone. And then he comes back. What did he realize? Bart seat. Because the attentive faculty was directed outward. The mind of the marshal went away. When the mind returned, outward. So, we have to be prepared. We have to have this attentive faculty in perversion. You've got to be prepared to notice the knower. That's the key. So when the Vimarsha disappears, the mind returns, you get it. There's nobody there. It does not need to be for a muhurta 48 minutes. That's what the scriptures always talk about. It only needs to be a moment. Depth of meditation is more important than length. So if we just tune up the mind a bit for a moment, just listen to the traffic. And see if you can notice who hears it, what hears it. Do you get these flashes? Oh, there is no person there. There's nothing there. Those are fleeting samadhis. They are enough. Do not make samadhi another object of desire. Instead, Focus on, do I know who I am? Samadhi is only a tool to reveal the truth. Now, here is the dreamer. Here is the waker. I'm in the dream, I'm the dream gym, in the dream world, and the alarm goes off. Ring! It's a gross shift. Oh my gosh, what a weird dream. The identity as the dreamer is gone. The shift between Jiva Bhavana, the feeling that I am a person, and the knowledge I am Brahma happens in the same way. But it's very subtle. You may have walked into class tonight and been ego identified. I did this and I'm going to do that and I'm visiting this person and I had this issue at work and I'm going to have dinner with my blah, 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 blah. And this ankriti is very solid. We come to class, we tune up the mind a bit. 
The Vedanta turns your attention back on the self. You get the sense. Oh, yes. Chidananda Rupa. I'm on the form of this consciousness. Where did that ahankara go? Where did that jiva bhavana go? Bhavana. For a moment. It's not real. It's impermanent. You just destroyed it. They come back. We're not going to worry about that right now. Where does the dreamer go? Gone. Where did Jeeva Bhavana go? Gone. Same kind of process, but so much more subtle. It's just a All right, this is very technical stuff. If it makes sense to you with your direct experience, Jai. If it goes, what the F is he talking about? Just put it on the shelf. Just put it on the shelf. So again, the objector is saying, my self disappeared. I saw it go. Dhiran is saying, hmm, something disappeared. Glad you disappeared it. It was stupid. But something remained. Brahma. I am Atma. Brahma. That Any thoughts on this? Hey, this is David. I'm a little confused about which shloka we're on here. I don't have the text in front of me. He's talking, the objector was talking about when the world disappears, nothing 31. remains. David, it's 31. It's, it's 31 in chapter one? Yes. Oh, okay. I think I might have messed it up. I think I've gone on to a different chapter, Jim. Well, we just had exegesis on that verse. <laughs> I think I've like the last three was the last three verses from the second chapter. Um, okay, that's all right. We won't dock your pay. Let's start with twenty-eight in chapter one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, this is very it's a great funny. conversation, though. My goodness. Well, the Vedanta is the same wherever we are. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, uh, David or um, Mark, can you verify that? Uh, the English commentary starts with from these composite elements. Yeah, I think that's it. From these composite elements, the cosmic egg arose. Yeah, I think that's yeah. it. Yes, cosmic egg is Hiranyagarbha. Back to the introductory thoughts about the total mind. Going on. Okay. Sounds good. bhogya bhoga ashrayod bhavaha hiranyagarbha smin. Andehe Vaishvanaro Bhavet Daijasa Vishvatam Yata Devatir Yangana Yang Yangna Yang Naradaya Devatir Yang Naradaya From these composite elements, the cosmic egg arose, and from it evolved all the worlds as well as the objects of experience and the bodies in which the experiences take place. So the idea of an egg 
the embryo is inside the egg. And the egg, the embryo matures, and from that egg comes the, the bird or the lizard or whatever. So the idea is this. Hiranya Garbha, the total mind, is the effect of the total vasana, which we could say is the, um, the bija seed. And then the Hiranya Garbha, the total mind, becomes the cause of the phenomenal causal, subtle, gross. Karana, sukshma, stula. That's the idea. So again, he's giving the, the, the Vedas cosmology of understanding. And again, do not think of this as Ancient people don't understand science. They understood a lot more than we think. Because they understood that it's all consciousness. The universe is consciousness appearing as they. All right, next verse. Te parab darshina prasyak tapa bodha vibarjita kurvate karma bhogaya karma kartum na bhunjate. They see only external things and are devoid of the knowledge of their true inner nature. They perform actions for enjoyment, and again they enjoy for performing action. So the first part of this verse almost echoes the idea of a platonic ideal. What do we mean by a platonic ideal? So, Nilang, what are you sitting on? Chair. Sure. What am I sitting on? Couch. No, that's a couch. Couch looking like a chair. But it's a chair. chair. What are your folks, what's your dad sitting on? Chair. So the outer forms are different. But there is an idea of chair behind them. Does that make sense? Yes. That's the platonic ideal that it's called. That's the world of mental cause that he's implying here. So when a carpenter makes a chair inside, they have to have an idea. It's not a table, it's not a bench, it's a chair. Then when it comes into the physical, each one is slightly different and unique. Read, read the, the, that's the first part. Read the, the whole verse again, because and, and, I forgot the second part already. Yeah, so I think it's just uh, a continuation. Just read, uh, read the whole verse for me, please. Yeah, I miss I miss part of the commentary for the previous verse, Jim. So that's we right, don't want commentary; we just want the verses. Yeah, I missed part of it, which I thought was commentary, but I think it's the verses for the previous one, which okay. will provide which will provide continuity. So when Hiranya Garbha identifies himself with the totality of gross bodies, he is known as Vaishvanara. When Taijasas do, do so with individual gross bodies of the example of the devas, men, or lower animals, they are known as vishvas. And then for this verse, they see only external things and are devoid of the knowledge of their true inner nature, vishvas are. They perform actions for enjoyment and again, they enjoy for performing action. Yes. 
So again, he's using the language of Mandukya. So we have Vishwa, the waking state world, which is effect. The cause of the waking state world is the subtle world. Taijasa. These ideas. So my ideas, my vasanas, my sankalpas create my world. Behind that, prajna, the causal world, which we experience in deep sleep, our vasanas, the seeds of it. So the basic point here is for all the things and beings, when we get down to the level of Vishwa, the phenomenal world, we, as Hamlet says, grunt and sweat under a weary life, acquiring, achieving, mating, loving, hating, dying over and over, not understanding the great karma chakra, the great wheel of life, and not understanding that which is beyond. Now, why is Vidyaranya going into all this technical breakdown of the phenomenal world. It's a very important point. The idea is, it is difficult for us to see who we are until we can clearly identify what we are not. My Bija Vasana, the root identifications. I think I'm my body. And what he's getting at here is make this distinction between the self and the not self. We probably shouldn't call it not self here. We should call it between Purusha Prakriti. We had that early in an earlier verse subject and all the objects, knower and the known. The known is just the tanmatkas in their various forms, gross and subtle. And the knower, I am Atma, Brahma. This self is the form is existence, consciousness, and peace. All right, next verse. Nadyam Kita Iva Varta. Avarta Tarama Shute, Prajanto Janmano Janma, Labante Naiba Nirvritim. They go from birth to birth as worms that have slipped into a river and are swept from one whirlpool to another and never attain peace. Ooh, what an image. So you've got to think of earthworms in the soil on the bank of a river and the snow has started to melt and the level of the river starts to rise. And all of a sudden it starts to erode the dirt on the side of the bank of the river and the worms in the bank are now caught in the river. going from one place to another, being impelled down river. So also, 
these subtle bodies caught up more, better, different. Get caught in the stream of the river of samsara. Sansara Sindhu. Never finding any peace. Very vivid image. Next verse. Satkarma Paripakate Karuna Nidhino Dhritaha Prapya Tirataruchayam Vishram Yantiyatha Sukham. When the good deeds performed by them in past births bear fruit, the worms enjoy rest, being lifted from the river by a compassionate person and placed under the shade of a tree on the bank. So, there's a Buddhist or a Jain, he's probably a Jain going by. And he sees the poor worm struggling in the water, he rescues the worm. It's Nilang. He did it. Empathy towards the animals. He picks up the worm. He puts it under a tree. Something you would do with it. Rescue. So also, the Guru in the scriptures are our Nilam. See? Next verse. Upadeshama vapyaivam achadya tatvadarshinaha panchakosha vivekena labhante nirvritim param. Similarly, the jivas finding themselves in the whirlpool of samsara receive the appropriate initiation from a teacher who himself has realized Brahman and has and differentiating the self from its five sheets attain the supreme bliss of release. So the guru is a temporary psychological device. Guru is an interesting word. The dictionary definition is heavy. That's you can see. It's good, it's like heavy. But there are other etymologies. The one I like, gu, means what is hidden or covered. We get guha or gufa in Hindi, which means cave. We get uh, guhyam. What's guhyam? Dajabuhya, royal secret. So gu, what is hidden, ru, that which uncovers or reveals what is hidden. That's the definition I like. <clears throat> so that's the guru's job. Now, why does Vidyaranya say that it is important that your guru herself be established in Brahma Vidya, be a knower of the Supreme? So, I'll give you an image. So, a flying saucer, a spaceship lands in Oakland. Out of it come little gray men. They walk up to Nilan. They speak English. I've been reading this book, and it says that humans have three heads and four arms. Are you a human being? You don't look like the human being in my book. 
what would you say? Your knowledge of human being is incorrect. How do you know that? Have you been reading a different book? Because I am one. Yes. Did you need to study? No. So also, the teacher who himself has crossed this whirlpool of samsara has stita pragna, steady wisdom. He never forgets. She never forgets who she is. Then when the student has a doubt and is confused, very simple. Just like when Milan was talking to the spaceman. It's very easy. Now, <clears throat> in Viveka Chudamani, there are a couple verses about the qualifications of a fit teacher. And in that text, Shankara says, Shrotriyam, who has knowledge of the scriptures. Then he says, who's a full knower of the Supreme, who has retired into the Supreme. So why do you think Shankara puts Shrotriyam first? Because the Guru not only needs to be established in Brahman, but he needs to be able to wield a valid means of knowledge. Vaita Vedanta is not the only one. It's the only one I know well. Many, many times people will say, Jim, why do you teach from these dusty old scriptures? I say, because they're powerful. So in this gestalt that we create, Guru, student who's willing and the scripture which is a safety it's a bridge and if we work the knowledge we're successful vision of the teacher is transmitted Okay, we need to stop. Thank you for our extra verses, Ganesh. They were really quite lovely. I enjoyed them. <laughs> My pleasure. And what's our verse for next week? 33. 33 in chapter one, right? Yes, chapter one. Okay. Om Pur Namada Pur Namidam. Pur nat pur namudachate, pur nasya pur namadaya pur namevav shishate. Om shanti 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 hari om sri guru no namaha hari om. Also, there are no mistakes. The Lord had Ganesh go to those pages. It's what needed to be studied tonight. It's all perfect. Hari Om.